Now, you're Toastmasters, you like to be involved. I've been speaking for about 18 minutes. So just think, in the first 18 minutes, what have you learned that can help you in preparing and presenting your programs? I'm going to walk down now. I can only go four rows back. That doesn't mean the back of the room can't think. So think, what have you learned that might be helpful for you? But all comments need to be edited to less than one sentence. Because the most difficult thing we all have to do is learn to edit our remarks. As Jerry Seinfeld says, I will spend an hour taking an eight-word sentence and edit it to five. So. Think about in one sentence, what have I already said that might be helpful to you? Do we have someone here? Open with a story that's relevant and interesting. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you, one sentence. Yes, ma'am. Plan your impact. Plan for impact, great. Well, I thought Toastmasters would be begging to speak. Begging, begging. Well, how about my golden gavel winner for tomorrow? Have I said anything valuable to you who's heard it all? Absolutely. You've blown me away. I've, I've... I'll give you that sentence now one more. You've said that I have several options for how to open. One is a dramatic statement, one is with a story, and so forth. Perfect, wonderful, we all have choices. Any more before I walk back on stage? Yes, remember, remember the three S's, start, structure, and stories. Oh, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> yes, give yourselves a hand, paying attention, wonderful. So we have many ways that we can open a speech. Then, what do I mean by answering the questions the audience have in their mind? I, as you heard, I'm a hairstylist, or I was a hairstylist for 24 years. So I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you ought to be a big difference between being a hairstylist and being a speaker. Well, as I said last year on 60 Minutes, <laughs> oh, come on, if you're on 60 Minutes, you'll tell everybody. <laughs> I used to work on the outside of people's heads, now I work in the inside. There's only half an inch difference. <laughs> but people always want to know what gives us the right or what do we know about the subject. For example, if I were talking to realtors, I might say something like, I know you're wondering, what does this woman know about selling real estate? Well, I've never sold any, have bought some, but as a hairstylist, just like you, I worked 100% on commission. Today as a speaker, I'm unemployed when I finish a speech until I create another. So just like you, I know the value of repeat business and referrals. We need to show our connection up front. Or perhaps we know nothing whatsoever about what they do. I addressed a few years ago some nuclear engineers. Not exactly a target audience for me. They said, I know you're wondering, what does this ex sales stylist know about nuclear engineering? I said, not much. But what you are here doing this weekend is coming up with a strategy to change your corporate culture. For the last 10 years, I have spoken for at least 100 groups a year. Many of them have changed their corporate culture. What I would like to do is share some of the best ideas that my clients have used. You see, what I did was find the connection of why they were there. I did not try and intellectually compete with people who are a lot smarter than I was, or at least thought they were. <laughs> And let's face it, they are a lot smarter than I am in certain areas. This, believe it or not, was an after-dinner speech, and for an hour, nuclear engineers who could have gone to the bar stayed and asked me questions, because I found the connection. That simply. 
So think, what do you have in common with the audience? A few years ago, I was in Australia traveling with some other speakers. One of them you might have heard, one of my longtime favorite speakers, Jim Rohn. Have you ever seen Jim Rohn speak? Fabulous, fabulous motivator speaker. And he said, Patricia, when you get up to speak to an audience and they've given you this fabulous introduction, the audience is thinking, so what? You want them to think, me too. And the best example I've ever seen of an audience connecting with a speaker, or the speaker connecting with the audience right front, was again at this young president's organization. One of the other speakers, Lou Dobbs from Moneyline CNN. And they introduced him, he'd won this award, he'd done this, been on television, very, very impressive. The audience was very impressed in themselves, very young, very successful. The typical group that would be thinking, so what? He walked up and he said, John did not tell you one award that I won last year. The local chamber of commerce named me father of the year. They had this fabulous event, gave me the plaque, I gave a speech. And afterwards I went home and my family were sitting down having dinner. I sat down and my son said, Dad, who actually voted on this award? <laughs> See, the essence was, it doesn't matter how famous we are, how well known we are, we will never get the respect from our teenagers we think we deserve. <laughs> He had such a great connection, it was perfect. So answer the questions, think what would they want to know? How do you find that connection? And then I said, it's important, what the premise or the objective of your speech in one sentence. 